Signs of hope in a hard-hit town. Thank you for joining us. I'm Darren Perrin. And I'm Kat Villianzoni. Ludlow was one of the first towns to feel the impact of last week's severe flooding. The devastation laid bare even as the rivers were still rising elsewhere. Rachel Mann returned to Ludlow today to see how far they've come on their road to recovery. Ludlow was one of the towns at hardest by recent flooding, leaving many people in a tough position. Today, more than two dozen people came to the Ludlow Community Center to enjoy some summer food, but they also had the option of picking up some groceries they say have been hard to come by. This is a barbecue. This is family. This is community. Residents here say there are places to get food, but not all the essential items. They've said getting dairy items like milk and yogurt has been especially challenging, so Operation Ludlow reached out to Hood. Like, I gave it like an idea what we could use. Next thing you know, this morning they arrived with a big honking hood truck down here, which was 500 cases. But even for not dairy items, the group has the community covered. From 10 to 5 every day, they're operating a makeshift grocery store, which is mostly non-perishable goods and supplies. People wanting to volunteer and help the community and Food changes throughout the day, different produce, there's local eggs that people have delivered, stuff from their garden, all kinds of stuff. And while Ludlow's biggest summer tourist attraction, Okemo Mountains Bike and Adventure Park, will be opening again next Thursday, there are still many small businesses dealing with the impacts of flooding. This plaza was devastated and Irene as well. This office was devastated, Irene as was... Suzanne so Garvey, well. owner of Mary Davis Realty and Inside Edge Rentals in Ludlow, says for now all of her employees are working from home. This is devastated, completely gutted out, four feet down, wiring, everything. Garvey says she's surprised only five regular listings and seven rental listings were impacted by flooding. As far as seasonal rentals, she says there's been no cancellations, but people should be mindful and know important things like grocery stores may not be open. But there is, there is access. There's a number of restaurants that have been able to open. The golf course is open. And so we are finally encouraging people, yes, please come. The restaurant Homestyle Hotel was also hit hard. We're entertaining people uh, to place gift card orders so we can fulfill them in the future. But it's not all doom and gloom for them as they prepare to reopen on Labor Day. But the silver lining is now we get to rebuild it the way that we want it to be built and do things a little differently. It's almost like opening this business again. For those temporarily out of commission, the Chamber of Commerce, in partnership with FEMA and the Small Business Administration, is operating a small business recovery center. We're also managing a uh, disaster relief fund and we'll be starting a process to get funds into people's hands related to that. Whitehall called the area a tourism mecca, encouraging visitors to come, but give while they're here. The chamber started a blog with a running list of things that are open instead of closed. Could be uh, an electrical company, um, places to stay, places to eat, things to do. So that'll be evolving right now. We In the meantime, Ludlow is standing strong. I think it's important to just say, you know, this is a resilient community. And it is truly inspiring to see how everyone has come together. Although the lakes may be uh, not advisable to swim in, you know, we can drink the water, we can use the resources, and uh, we want to welcome people. I and while these local businesses are still being impacted, everyone we spoke with say they're optimistic things will be up and running normally again by their busy winter season. In Ludlow, Rachel Mann, Channel 3 News.